All right, everybody, this is the fun video. So this is the video where I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna start out in just a moment, I'm gonna show you those numbers again. I want you to take it, first of all, a deep calming breath with me right now. Okay, here come the numbers. Here it is. Okay, first of all, I just wanna tell you, everything is gonna be okay. You don't, by the end of this, need to understand this in that you're not gonna be quizzed on this. There's no test on this at the end of today. Eventually this semester, this is what we're gonna learn. But what I just wanna show you today is that everything here that goes into calculating a statistic, things like means, uh, sum of squares, mean squares, and eventually an F ratio, all that stuff just comes down to three basic things, okay? And I'm gonna walk you through each one. I'm gonna show you the data, and then we're gonna calculate these, but I just want you to get the gestalt, the, the broad idea that we have basically observations, we have expectations, and we have two different sets, really three, but two important sets of deviations. Observations are data points, expectations are means, and deviations, how our observations deviate from our expectations. Okay, so I'm gonna take that away. We're gonna come and we're gonna start and we're actually just gonna look at some data for a moment, okay? So we're gonna imagine this three group, a multiple group experiment in which we have, let's say again, that we're giving two different kinds of drugs and trying to improve happiness. Sorry for the lack of creativity here, but let's just go with that example. So let's say here that we have drug A, drug B, and a control, okay? Three different types of interventions. And now, and this is happiness levels up the side. And what we wanna know is, how happy are the people who have taken each one of these drugs? So one of the ways to think about this is with each of the data points. Okay, so here, this is a person in group A who scores a one, two, three, four, five, six. So this person scores a six on happiness. Here's another person who has scored a seven on happiness and another person who scored a five on happiness. So in group A, we have a five, a six, and a seven on happiness. In group B, we have three people and again, just for the sake of simplicity, each of these, these are very small groups. You've never conducted an experiment with this small of groups. We have three people in each group, someone here who scored a four, a five, and a six on happiness. And in the control group, we have someone who scored uh, a four, a five, and a three on happiness. So our basic experiment, three groups, we, we can think about these each as nine different observations or each one of these groups can be represented by a mean. So remember, we've talked about these means as being expectations. In other words, if I were to ask you, huh, I'm, there's one person, I'm gonna randomly choose someone from group A, and I want you to tell me their happiness level, but you don't know which one it's gonna be. I just need you to guess their happiness level. What happiness level do you expect them to have? Well, all things being equal, we would expect them to be close to that mean. So you would guess a happiness level of six. Sometimes you might be off a little bit. They might be a seven. Sometimes you might be off. They might be a five. But you're going to guess that six. So we have a mean to represent the people who took group A, drug A, a mean for group B, mean of five, and a mean to represent the control group. So in other words, this is our expectations for what individuals in each group are like. If these groups are meaningful, then we expect individuals within each group to be somewhat similar to one another. Remember though, that each mean is an imperfect representation of each group. In other words, people deviate from the expectation. Another way of saying that is, there are errors. So here, this is a deviation. This individual 
deviates from the group mean. There is an error there. Another way of saying this is there is within group variance. Within group variance. So let me circle that in a different color. We have within group variance. In other words, group members from within a single group, group A, vary in terms of their happiness scores. And as we talked about before, this within group variance is our purest measure of error when we calculate an ANOVA, which is what we'll do later on in the semester. Finally, there's another expectation or another mean. This is, oh, and members within group B deviate from their expectation and members within group C. So we see that there's some error within each one of these groups. So finally, I want to show you one other expectation, which is this is called the grand mean. And this is the expectation if the null hypothesis is true. So remember that null hypothesis, if the treatment really made no difference at all to people's happiness level, and you ask us to just guess, so in other words, all these people could be lumped together in one group because the drugs don't make any difference. And if I ask you to guess one person's score, not knowing anything else about them, you guess the grand mean here, which happens to be five. So one, two, three, four, five is the grand mean. But uh, that is the expectation if nothing is going on. And so once again, our task is to predict group scores. Let me erase some of this stuff. You can always rewind the video if you want to re-see these again, but I'll clear up some of the clutter here. Our task is to predict group scores better than the grand mean alone. So in other words, you want to say, how well do people in drug A score on happiness? Well, if nothing is going on, the null hypothesis, we're going to say they score, they're going to score a 5. Now, it turns out there's a deviation. They're a little different from the null hypothesis. If we're going to predict the, the group B, we guess 5, and there's no deviation. The deviation here equals 0. Here, the deviation equals positive 1. They're one higher than we would predict by the null hypothesis. And over here, they're one lower. The deviation equals negative one. Okay, so our task is to predict the group scores better than the grand mean alone. The further away from the grand mean that each of our groups are, or in other words, the more that each group deviates from the null hypothesis expectation, or a third way of saying that, the more between group variance there is. In other words, the more that groups vary from one another and really vary from that uh, grand mean, the more confident we're going to be that our groups are actually different. So visually speaking, this is all we're going to be doing. All those numbers you saw before, it's just to ask the basic question, do these groups differ from the grand mean more than we would expect by chance alone? So let's go back and let's take a look at the numbers. We're going to do it one at a time. So instead of showing you that whole page, I'm just going to show you a little bit at a time. These right here are individual scores. So SA1, so this is the score for participant number one in drug A, okay? That is, so if we go all the way back here, that is participant number one in drug A. So they're in the drug A group. That's all that's saying is this person scored a five on their happiness level, this person right here in drug A group, the first person scored a five on their happiness. We have three people in that group. Remember, they scored a five, a six, and a seven. In group B, they scored a four, five, and six. And in the control group, they scored three, four, and five. Those are our observations. This is the data. 
So now we want to try to figure out, okay, how can we represent our expectations for that data? Well, one of the ways is saying if drug A is really doing something, we expect all three of these people to be somewhat similar to one another. In other words, we can represent our expectation for, for drug A. If we know someone's in drug A group, we want to know what do we guess that their happiness level is. And the best way to estimate that is to just take the mean of all their scores. If you average five, six, and seven together, so add them up, divide them by three, you get the mean score here, which is six. The average drug A score is six, the average drug B score is five, and the average control group is four. So in other words, just looking at this, it appears that those taking drug A are slightly happier than those taking drug B, who are slightly happier than those taking drug C. In other words, there's a deviation between scores. But remember, another way to think of the expectation is maybe nothing is going on at all. That was, remember on this one, represented by that grand mean or the null hypothesis. So if nothing is going on at all, let's calculate out that grand mean. That's the average of all of these people. So we average, take all the scores, add them up, divide by nine, which is the total number of scores there are, and we get the grand mean, the total mean. So in other words, if all of these people are essentially the same, the best way to describe all their scores is the average, an average of five. The grand mean equals five here. Okay, now what we wanna start doing is comparing deviations. First, our most meaningful deviation is, do these groups actually differ from one another? Is six different from five, different from four? We're gonna take a look at between group variants. So the way that we do that is we take the average of group A and we compare it to the average of everyone. We want to know, is this group scoring any better than average on happiness? So we take the mean of group A minus the grand mean. And now, in order to make it positive, we're going to square that. So 6 minus 5. 6 minus 5 squared, and then we're going to multiply it by the number of subjects who are in that group. So we have three people in this group, and we're going to weight it by three. We're going to give it a weight of three. So 6 minus 5 equals 1. 1 squared equals 1. And then over here, 3 times 1 equals 3. So this is the squared variance from drug A versus the grand mean. And we'll do the same thing for each of the other ones. So here, what we want to know is, is group B, right here, that average of 5, any different from the average of 5? Five? 5 minus 5, even when you square it and multiply it times 3, is still 0. So no, this group is exactly what we would expect it to be if everyone was scoring the same. And now we'll do the same with the third category. Is group C, average of four, any different from this grand mean, that average of five? Four minus five equals one. One squared equals one. Three times one equals three. And that's where we get this. Now we're going to sum them all up. We're going to add up this square and this square and this square. This is our sum of squares, and we get this. Now we'll go through this again in a couple weeks. Right now, I just want to show you how this relates to the data. But what this is telling us is this score tells us, in general, how much do these three groups, on average, differ from each other? How much of a difference does it make if you took drug A versus drug B versus the control group? And so we get a number here. The second type, so these are deviations. These are the deviations of each group from the overall average. The second set of deviations we now want to take a look at is our error. Because we want to, we don't know, is six, is that a lot? Is that a little? Are these groups differing way more than we'd expect them to or way less? We don't know. We have to compare it to some, something. 
And so we're going to compare it to our second set of deviations, remember, which represents error. And our big question is going to be, does the error that we'll come up with and the between groups, how do they compare? Is the between groups variant bigger than our error variance? Or is it about the same? Is it what we'd expect? And that's how we're going to get our ultimate statistics. So let's go on. We'll do the second set, and then we'll end. And I'll let you take a deep breath. And then we'll, we'll talk about words, not numbers, for the last video. So we're going to do the same kind of thing. But here, instead of asking the question, is the group different from the grand mean, what I want to know is, how much does each person differ from the group average? In other words, one of my assumptions is that this expectation, this mean, is meaningful. That this actually, this average for drug A group describes each one of these participants well. But I got to test that out. I got to see how much error, how much do each of these people deviate from that expectation? So what I do is I, I for each person here, I take how much does that person deviate from their group average? And I square it. 5 minus 6 is 1. Squared is 1. Plus, how much does this person, 6, deviate from the average? 6 minus 6 is 0. Squared is 0. And how much does this person deviate? 7 minus 6 is 1. Squared is 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay. So we have a little bit of error variance there. And we have a little bit more in each one of these categories. So here we do the same thing for the second group. We take, oops, sorry. We do, those are the wrong calculations. Um, we do the same thing for the second group where now we're taking a look and we're asking how much does this person differ from the group average? 4 minus 5 squared is 1, plus 5 minus 5 is 0, plus 6 minus 5 is 1, square each one of those, and you get 1 plus 0 plus 1 equals 2. And that's where we get this 2 from. And we'll do the same thing for this third group. How much does this person differ? How much does this person differ? And this person, and you square those. So now what we have here is another set of squared deviations. Okay. And you can also do the same thing and just find out, in general, how much total variability is there. In other words, if the null hypothesis is true, in other words, this is our grand mean, or the null hypothesis, null expectation, how much does each person differ from that? 5 minus the grand mean, 6. Minus the Grammy. And all this tells us is if we lump all of these people together, how much do they spread out in general? How much total variability is there? And just to kind of show you how this all works out, it turns out, and this will always be the case, that the between group variance plus the within group variance is going to equal the total variability. So in other words, what we're doing up here with these two is we're really breaking down how much do people differ in general what do all of these, how much do all these people differ from the grand mean? And we break that down into two categories. The variability due to error and the variability due to treatment plus error. And what we're going to do in the end is to compare those. So ultimately, what we do in the end is now create we take these sum of squares and we we make what are called mean squares out of them. These pull each one of these back into a way that we can compare them to one another. So here's that total amount of between group variance. You don't need to know what a DF is right now. We'll talk about that later in the semester. But all that to say, we're going to take this and make it meaningful. We do the same thing down here. We're going to use something called a degree of freedom or DF in here. And all we're going to do now for a final analysis is we compare three to one. And what we find is three is actually much bigger than one is. That we have a lot more between group variance than we do within group variance. And that's what's gonna give us our F ratio. Our F is really just equal to how much 
between group variance over within group variance, or in this case, three over one. Okay, we'll do that again in a few minutes, and we'll do that again in a few weeks, but this is just the first time I want you to see that. Okay, so take a deep breath. We can, I can answer questions about this in class, but this is the first time I want you to just take a look and see that these numbers aren't as scary as they need to be. That these numbers are really just representations of these individual points, these averages, and this grand mean, and these deviations and the kind of deviations between those. So they're just observations, expectations, and deviations. Okay, you can pause the video, take a deep breath. Thank goodness that this slide is over.